Hello, this is Professor BRB, and in this video we will be drawing this delicious cupcake. Um, if you have access to uh, my template, please open it up to Artboard Number 8 Cupcake. You can download this for free uh, from a link on the playlist. Or you can just work with your own file, that would be fine too. Let's fit Artboard in Window here move over here. It's kind of a big artboard because there's a lot of detail in this lesson. And uh, let's set our stroke and fill to default right here. You can do that. A white fill and a black stroke. Go to our ellipse tool and just click and drag. Hold down your shift key to constrain it to a perfect circle. And if you don't like where it is on the artboard, just hold down your uh, space bar and that will move it into position. And you have one circle. You can simply copy that by holding down your option key and dragging it into position. Move these over here. And when I have those two done, I can just kind of use my Reflect tool here, clicking once there, and copy. Yeah, that was easy. Next, I want to draw this ellipse to make the bottom part of the frosting. And I put a little uh, crosshair here to kind of make it easy for you. If you uh, Stay in your, uh, make sure you're in your ellipse tool and start at this crosshair and hold down your option key and that will make it draw from the center. You don't want to use your shift key in this case because you don't want a perfect circle. I just want to make sure I've kind of caught the bottom of all of my circles there so I don't have any gaps. Next I'd like to merge these into one shape like we see down here rather than have six distinct shapes. And for that I will use my Pathfinder. So going to my selection tool, I'm going to select all six ellipses. Under Window, choose Pathfinder. Now I could do this with the Shape Builder tool, but the Pathfinder in this case will be quicker. Uh, right here, I just choose my first option, which is Unite, and click. And bingo! Everything is united exactly the way I want. So now let's move on and draw our cut for the cupcake. Rectangle tool. Draw your rectangle. Direct selection tool. Click off and then just select those two bottom points. This is one of these lovely new features in Creative Cloud that I can adjust the radius of just my bottom um, points and not my top points, which is just a great feature and I love it. Uh, back, I'm still in my direct selection tool. I'm going to click off and now I just want to make the bottom of my cup narrower than the top. So I first I select the two left points and using the arrow key on my keyboard I just click uh, I just hit that a number of times and make sure you count I did it nine times there and now I'm gonna do it nine times and that will keep it symmetrical so that looks pretty great uh, I now have my frosting and my cup and uh, I'm going to put some color on these. Let me get my swatches panel out here. As I choose this, I can um, choose maybe a, a pink gradient for the top and get rid of the stroke. And on the uh, cup down here, uh, get rid of the stroke and I'm just going to use a fill I used in an earlier video 
the flower pot fill, but I, I think that'll fit just fine. So now I can start assembling this and taking a look at it. And you're going to notice right now that my cup is on top of my frosting because I drew it after I drew the frosting. And when you are in draw normal mode in Illustrator, everything that you draw gets stacked on top of whatever you drew before. So with my frosting selected, if I go here to Object, Arrange, Bring to Front, it brings it to the front. And while I'm at it, um, I think I will align these using my Align Panel as we did in a previous video just to make sure they're perfectly aligned. Now we're going to do a few more um, advanced techniques uh, to make this texture that goes inside the cup. And so hold on to your hats. This is going to be kind of fun. So we're going to start with just some lines. And I want to set my fill to none and my stroke to kind of a dark brown. Go to my line segment tool here. And starting at the top, this is important, um, hold down your shift key and drag it down and you'll get a perfect straight line. It's too thin, one point is not thick enough, so let's change it to say seven points. Selection tool, shift option drag. And that creates a copy. Uh, the shift constrained to straight and the option created the copy. Make sure that you release your uh, mouse button before you release the keys. Now object transform, transform again, repeats that shift option drag. And you would notice when we go to object transform that there is a keyboard command here, command D. So all we have to do now is hold down our command or our control key and go D, 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 D. So it's very easy. Select them all and we want to group these so that Illustrator will see them as one thing. And we also want to add a variable with profile to get this pointy look where it's wide here and narrow there. And fortunately for us, and you can find this in your stroke panel, uh, Illustrator ships with a very nice variable width profile uh, with profile number four. Just click on that and here we go. We have just exactly what we want now. Now I want to get them to fan out so they'll look more natural on the cup and in order to do that I'm going to make sure they're all selected and that they're grouped. That's important so that Illustrator will see it as one thing and we go to object Envelope Distort, Make with Warp. And the, the default is actually pretty wide, and you'll probably get something like this. Uh, make sure that you have Preview checked here. And just kind of drag it down till you like the way it looks. Once again, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. I'm going to do mine at, say, 9%, and click OK. Next, what we want to do is paste that into our cup. And we are going to use draw inside mode, which we also used in the previous vase tutorial. So select the cup, and down here at the bottom, that's draw normal, that's draw behind, we want draw inside mode. Click that and you get these dashed lines indicating that that object is in draw inside mode. And you can only apply draw inside mode to one object at a time. Select your fanned out lines, edit, cut, and then select the cup, edit, paste. And notice they paste inside in such a way that they don't show anywhere outside of the cup. And you can, with the direct selection tool, uh, you can actually adjust them a little bit and change the position uh, if you want to. Make sure that you go back to draw normal mode or you're going to really confuse yourself. 
And we just have very few things left to do here, one of which is to add the sprinkles pattern. And here's where we get introduced to the quite wonderful appearance palette. Uh, it's been in Illustrator for a long time, but many people do not realize the power of it. So just make sure that you have your frosting selected. Go to Window, Appearance, and it will show you here that you have no stroke and a pink fill. What, one of the things the Appearance panel allows us to do is add multiple strokes and multiple fills to the same path. So here we go, add new fill. And now it just duplicated the fill that I had. So I have now two pink fills. They doesn't look like anything has changed. But I can access my stroke panel up here on this top fill, or my fill panel rather, my swatches panel. This top one here, I'm going to select the sprinkles pattern that I created earlier. And because the sprinkles pattern has no background, it uh, looks great right on top of my gradient fill. And you can have actually as many fills and indeed as many strokes as you want um, on one path. So all that really remains here is to draw my cherry. I think you can figure that out very easily, just holding down your shift key and making a perfect circle here. So what's life without a cherry on top? and it's putting the sprinkle fill in. It's easy enough to change it to the red fill. And maybe that little line there, the little green stem could be good. Um, I think I want this to go behind, right? So let's go object, arrange, send it back. And I'm gonna use my arc tool here, just uh, Set it to no fill and a green stroke. And draw a little stem. Make it a bit thicker, possibly. And then um, I want some kind of variable width profile to go on that. Let's give it a rounded cap and test out. Uh, that first width profile on it. Yeah, you know, it looks pretty good actually. So let me move it away from my template so you can kind of see what's going on here without the template getting in the way. Move it down there. Now you see. There's our cupcake. Uh, the last tutorial in this um, series, which is based on this one. Uh, object tools uh, template that you can download, uh, will be showing you how I created that sprinkles pattern. So I hope you'll uh, join us for that, and I hope you've gained some skills in this playlist. Uh, thanks for joining me.